What's up everyone collectors, welcome to a model review, it's your host Ray. In today's video I'll be reviewing the Gemini Jets 1-400 scale Contour Airlines I think it is, Airlines Airways, I'm not cultured enough to know, Embraer ERJ145. In this video I'll talk about the box and the model itself and at the end of the video I'll give my personal opinion about what I think of this model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors. That being said, here we go. The box is a standard issued uh, regional jet box at 10.5 centimeters lengthwise and height wise and 4 centimeters wide. I'll show you around the box now. So here's the front, bottom, right side, top. Oh, there's the price tag, left side, and the back side. Take a moment to read this if you'd like to. This box features a flap that allows for the model to be seen in the box. Under this flap is a bit of information about the Embraer ERJ-145 and uh, that jet family. If you'd like to, take a moment to read this. If you can, that text looks really small. Once you open up the box, you get the model fully assembled, painted, and ready to go. Before I begin my review, I'm going to give you a quick 360 of the model so you can get a good look around it. So this model is pretty small. At 7.5 centimeters for the fuselage length, 5.5 centimeters for the wingspan, and 2 centimeters tall for its height. Very small, but accurate to 1-400 scale. This model is also decently heavy for its size because it's made primarily out of die-cast metal. Alright, please forgive the poor camera quality, it's just that I have to zoom in pretty far to get this, uh, the details of this model in the frame and focus. It's just that small. Alright, so starting up the review with the fuselage, uh, no shape looks decent, uh, looks pretty pointy, I'm not 100% sure if it's supposed to be that pointy, but I think it looks acceptable. Uh, nose gear looks pretty tall, that's kind of unusual. Um, uh, and of course the wheels don't roll, you can kind of see a plastic flake off of there actually. But yeah, it looks pretty tall. Uh, details look pretty good, lots of details up here on the nose. Very small, but they're still printed there. And I thought this was a stain at first, but that is in fact a detail right there, that black dot with the stuff inside of it. Uh, looks pretty good. As we move down the fuselage, we have the windows, the contour logo, and then we start uh, with the uh, blue colors. Uh, these look pretty cool, it's actually a pretty unique livery. And as we move to the rear of the fuselage, here is the back part with uh, the engines and the tail. So I'll talk about the vertical stabilizer briefly. This is where uh, the problems start because you can see a lot of glue here. That's a small imperfection. But you can also see a bit of inconsistencies with the surface, like a piece of debris got trapped there, a uh, paint scratch right up here. And right from here, I'll start talking about the horizontal stabilizers too. Uh, th there appears to be some sort of, I think that's a paint chip. I highly doubt that's an applied detailer. Or actually, no, that is not a paint chip. That is actually a detailer, so uh, my bad. But yeah, the horizontal stabilizers, first they came broken with this model. They were very loose, so I had to re-glue those. And you can tell the alignment isn't really all that good, so that is kind of a poor job on my end. Uh, I think there was something I did want to mention on the right side. I something back here, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, vertical stabilizer does have a bit of debris and paint issues on the tail. Very small imperfections, but they're still there. And it appears as though the black th uh, the black line in the front here may have been applied inconsistently. There's a bit of a slight imperfection in the way it was applied there. And like I said earlier, we got more stains here and here. So yeah, a bit of staining back here. Usually I save the engines for later, but while we're back here, I'd like to talk about them. This is probably where this model is gonna suffer the most. So at a first glance, the engines look pretty good. There's a ContourAirlines.com logo there, and we've already got our first stain right here. So yeah, there's that. However, things get really ugly once you look at them from the top. So the one on the left is ever so slightly tilted. It's also kind of backed out there. I'd have to probably see if this thing is loose. It's probably willing to bet. Okay, no, it's not loose, but yeah, uh, it wasn't inserted into its slot all the way. Uh, so there's that. You can also see a scratch on top of the left engine there, and then a some weird paint bubble here on the right engine. And then even more uh, paint inconsistencies there and a bit of a surface issue. Uh, they're small imperfections except for those paint issues. Those are rather concerning to see. Bottom of the engines though, those are detailed. Here you can also see the aircraft's registration upside down. But yeah, bottom of the engines looks good, but the top of the engines, that's where they suffered. In terms of the engine details, of course, this is very small. Oh wow, there's actually fan blade details in there. All right, so there are fan blade details, which that's cool. It's cool to see. And the exhausts, those are painted uh, dark metallic gray. So they did good on some parts, but they definitely dropped the ball on some others. I knew I was forgetting something. Moving on to the wings themselves. The wings, of course, they're small. They look pretty good. There's barely any printed detail. Not like there's very much to put anyway. But yeah, there's, uh, there's the uh, 
overwing exit marking there. Just a little circle here. Metallic forward flaps and of course a few control surfaces here with the flaps. A uh, decent amount of detail for a small model. On the bottom, oh wow, okay, I've never actually seen this on a Gemini model. Got definitely a bit more detail down here. That's a welcome addition for me. Very nice to see down here. So, yeah, the wings look pretty solid, so that's good to see. Now, in terms of aerial details, there are no aerial details on this model. This thing is simply too small to include them at this time with current technology. Now, bottom of the model, like I said, bottom of the wings was pretty detailed, and you can see there's a decent selection of printed detail down here, too. And I just noticed this. That is a pretty big seam line there. This is a credo mold, so... Uh, yeah, seam lines are to be expected, but holy cow, that thing is huge. There's a very small Gemini jet saloon. I always find it funny how they always manage to include that there, uh, even though it's so small. <laughs> but yeah, it's there. And from here, we'll move straight to the landing gear. Landing gear on this model, eesh, not that hot. So from the side, they look normal, but from the front, you can see the wheels are bent inwards, especially on that left main gear. That does not look good. The wheels don't roll, nor do I expect them to, but... Yeah, uh, wheel positioning could have been better. And like I said earlier, nose gear looks a little too uh, tall, and the wheels on the nose gear aren't too hot either. Uh, let's try to focus that. There you go. All right, so here's my embarrassing attempt at showing you the front of the plane. I'll try and angle this upwards. There you go. All right, so here we can evaluate wing flex. Engine clearance doesn't apply because the engines aren't wing mounted uh, or mounted under the wings or anything like that. And cockpit window printing. So wing flex looks good. Gear balance actually looks symmetrical. So even though the gears are placed a little bit odd, it is symmetrical, so I won't complain all that much. Uh, vertical stabilizer looks decent. Engines look good from the front, but remember that alignment issue I showed you on the left engine earlier, the one that's on the right of your screen. Uh, cockpit window printing is ever so slightly slanted. Uh, I wouldn't say that's within acceptable mar margins, but it's not too bad. Uh, not much else to criticize or complain about up here. Aside from that, everything looks decent. I definitely got to take notes for this video because with that, the review is over, and this is definitely shorter than my other reviews. Now time for my personal opinion and recommendation. Well, this thing is a small plane. Uh, of course, Gemini had to do their quality control issues here and there. Once again, a lot of those state like the stains and the small things, very small imperfections, but the paint issues on the engines and the engine alignment, that's kind of a more major issue. And same thing with the gear wheels. Uh, those are very small, but I mean, would be nice to see them straight. So... Do I recommend this model? As per usual with Gemini Jets, I do, but proceed with caution. Of course, you never know what quality control issues you might get. I saw multiple examples of these at the store I went to go buy these at, and yeah, they all had all sorts of quality control issues and broken parts. Uh, like I said, the horizontal stabilizers were broken off on my example, and on the ones I saw at the store, those were loose as well, and the gears were even worse off. There were stains. It was pretty bad. So, yeah, quality control on this batch wasn't really that good from what I can gather. Still, there might be a few good eggs out there, so when buying a Gemini Jets model online, just remember you're always taking a bit of a gamble there. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more model airplane content. I'm going to try and spam out as many videos as I can before I go to school. And that's all I've got for you guys today. Like, comment, and subscribe. Happy collecting. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. Peace out.